Please stand clear of the doors. Por favor, manténganse alejado de las puertas. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Monorail Monday. This is season five, and this is our 31st episode overall. This is where we talk about my experiences working at Disney in the past, including behind the scenes stories, operations, how things work, guests to craziness, etc. If you haven't seen us before, check out the links below, find a couple of playlists for previous seasons, onward we go. So one of the things I'm gonna talk about today is something I found in the, uh, the monorail archive vault. Not necessarily dealing with uh, monorail specifically, this is more dealing with custodial. I have a custodial training guide. So we're going to talk a little bit about that and some of the differences from that versus monorail training. I think that'll be interesting to look at some of the training for another area. First though, I wanted to talk a little bit about uh, cast member shaming. It was brought up on Twitter last week and it seems like more people are basically uploading videos of cast members doing or not doing things that they feel like they should be doing and cast member shaming is basically what is happening and I did not have to deal with this quite as much as you have to deal with it as a current cast member but we did have uh, some of those big hulking video cameras that people would bring on their trips and sometimes you just you're climbing the monitor to start driving you're listening to the radio you're trying to deal with the situation and here comes some guy with a big camera in your face and he's just pointing and going, this must be the best, huh? And you know, when you're in the middle of dealing with situations, sometimes, uh, you know, there may be a monorail situation, maybe dealing with second checks or something like that, afternoon checks that we'd have to deal with regularly. And sometimes getting cameras just sort of shoved in your face is very distracting during these roles, as well as a little, little bit of a problem sometimes if you're trying to deal with a safety situation. The guest doesn't know that. But that's part of my uh, my argument or my perspective on things is a lot of people, pe a lot of times people do not realize they don't know what's going on. Uh, I've had people, uh, I think I've told the story before about the guy who swore that uh, another cast member, myself, we basically kicked his pregnant wife and shoved them into the train. Ridiculous, of course. But somebody just walks up at the last second and sees this guy screaming at me with his pregnant wife behind him, may immediately jump to the conclusion that we were in the wrong and we really did push and shove uh, his, his pregnant wife and that there isn't something else going on. Uh, I had a guest one time file a complaint saying that I wasn't paying any attention to them in the operating cab. And of course, when I went to talk to a supervisor about it, of course, they got that complaint immediately. We went to talk to I explained that we're in the middle of a situation, a monorail mechanical situation, and basically I was talking to the to the monorail central and talking to other trains, maintenance, things like that. And so I was not necessarily jumping to answer all their questions immediately. And when they pointed their camera at me, I was not immediately answering all of their questions for their for their show. You know, it wasn't it was way before YouTube. But obviously they had something they wanted to do with their camera and I was not participating in a timely manner. Of course I explained to the supervisor, talked to Monorail Central, talked to the other trains, listened to the radio, talked to the guests in your train. The guests in the operating cab were last on that, on that uh, list of, of priorities. Of course these people don't know that. They're just, they just are in there uh, in the cab thinking, hey, this is the best day ever. We're in the front cab. We're just gonna talk the Monorail guy's ear off. So when I'm asking them to please, please hold for just a moment, I'm dealing with something, uh, you know, they, they don't know. So they just get mad and, and file a complaint. So what you're seeing more and more, everybody's got a phone. So everybody starts filming everything. Every perceived slight now becomes something. I'm gonna post this on social media and show this guy. Maybe they don't know anything about the situation or what's going on. I've working parade crowd control and people are just basically uh, doing everything but physically attacking me. And in my case, when I worked there, sometimes we did have guests who laid a hand or struck a cast member. And basically nothing, nothing happened. The guest was given a basket because they felt bad later. 
So sometimes you don't know what's been going on in a certain situation. Don't know why something's not been happening. Uh, a lot of times we enforce safety policies, not just Disney guides for doing things, but actual safety policies. And then uh, you, you try and, and enforce some of these policies and then the guest is basically rewarded. Somebody gets pushed into a moving monorail entering the station, the guest is rewarded. So there's a couple of ways it can be handled. Just file a complaint with, with Main Street or, or uh, City Hall or guest relations at whatever park you happen to be at. And they can talk through and handle it. But to end up with a video of something going on that does not necessarily capture, maybe some of them do, I'm sure some of them capture the exact situation as it happened and there's no excuse, nothing else going on. But there are definitely a number of times where things are not captured, uh, don't capture things in their entirety and there is perspective missing or the story behind the story. And seeing videos go up all the time uh, of, of cast members in different situations, uh, you know, it's really, for, for me as a former cast member who dealt with a lot of situations that were misconstrued until we explained them, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's a little sad, it's a little disturbing. Um, shoot all the videos you want, it's nice if you're going to shoot videos of a cast member. It's nice if you kind of see if it's either see if it's okay or if they're sort of in the middle of performing something and it seems obvious that they're okay with it. But just to sort of go sticking a camera in people's face, especially in the middle of a transaction or they didn't let you uh, get get on through your fast path and then just raising a camera and just you know I'm gonna I'm gonna show you. If you feel really feel like there has been a mistake made and you got to, uh, you know, you want to make a complaint, go complain, complain to guest relations, complain to a supervisor or what have you. Uh, but don't post uh, these videos because we don't know, you don't know what other parts of the story there may be somewhere in, in perspective. Just let the managers and, and supervisors handle these kind of situations. All right, so let's jump into the next, the next exciting thing here. How about this? Custodial, custodial training. We're gonna talk a little bit about the training guide here and see just what kind of requirements there were for custodial training, what kind of training schedules did they have and how some of this is different. There's uh, usually a little guide in here that will talk about where things are located, where is the nearest mailbox, where is the nearest restroom at a particular location. So they would ask you a lot of things like that in different locations at different parks different lands, what's the closest bathroom here? What is the closest place to to buy film? What's the co closest place to get a postcard? Kids, ask your parents about what postcards are. They also, they, they also cover a lot of things like evacuations from the parks, evacuation routes. Where would, we, where would we escort guests out if there was an emergency and they wanted to evacuate the pet parks immediately? It's also a page here with a bunch of facts about the different parks and restrooms and things like that. So let's look at those for just a second. Of course, these are different now because there's been a lot of changes over the last 20 plus years. But here's some interesting facts from the mid 90s. So here's some of the statistics list. I believe this is for the Magic Kingdom. It doesn't say specifically what, uh, what location for these statistics. Restroom, number of men's guest restrooms, 26. 124 sinks, 119 toilets, 158 urinals, 99 soup, soap dispensers. Number of women's restrooms, 26. 145 sinks, 276 toilets, and 99 soap dispensers. So that's kind of cool, some of the facts that you can imagine, especially now, 20 something years later, as credited as the parks are now, how much more supplies must be going through during a day. Another thing to look at here, cast activities. This is something we would of course let uh, let new hires know about, that there's all these different activities and things like that that you could participate in. Uh, I mentioned recently that you ha they had like computer classes, self-paced self, uh, classes that you could sort of take uh, on the side on your own time. I learned DOS and a few other programs like that uh, in, the, in the computer class, all free. Here's the training checklist. Here is a list of basically things that a cast member would want to check off at the 
cast member, the new cast member who's being trained has either done or has learned about the regular procedures for that and they can check off what's been done. There's a training quiz in here. This quiz includes things like what five busing locations require a costume other than custodial whites? How many breaks and or lunches do you get on a six hour shift, seven hour shift, eight hour shift, nine hour shift, etc.? Describe the following guidelines for proper grooming with regard to all the following. Men answer part A, women answer part B. Hair length, sideburns, mustaches, facial hair, jewelry, rings. Why is it important that you do not over socialize with other employees or guests when you're working in an on stage area? So lots of little questions about how to do things, things you would learn in training, verifying exactly what you should be doing. And some of this included the chemicals, which chemicals to use in certain spots, how do you handle a spilled Coke on carpet, things like that. In custodial, it was a three-day process, including day one of sweeping, day two of bussing tables in the Magic Kingdom, day three dealing with restrooms, as well as a checkout. There's a let's get to know you segment here, where it asks about hobbies, things you like to do, sort of a way for the trainer to get to know you. I don't remember ever completing this. They may have had this in custodial or maybe some of the other areas. I certainly never saw this in monorails and never filled one uh, or had anybody fill one out and say, hey, tell, tell me what you like to do and things like that so we get to know each other. Uh, we just kind of casually covered some of that stuff to do as we were traveling between things or in between moments of training, but uh, never had to fill out one of these forms. There's also a scavenger hunt here. I also never did a scavenger hunt, but apparently in some areas, they must have done these scavenger hunts. Uh, like, bring back a child's menu from a full service restaurant. Where are the three world key information centers? Which Communicore is the Epcot Center pole in? What is the name of the 360 Circle Vision movie at Canada? Some of those are pretty easy for most of you. Some of those are gonna be a little tougher because you weren't in the park when some of these things existed and they no longer exist. And there's a sort of a training guide, and this is important for trainers to be able to follow along and make sure that uh, Disney makes sure that the trainers are doing what they're supposed to do. So these guidelines, of course, uh, so these guidelines show how to fill out an itinerary, what's important, what they're looking for, use of SOP, train from SOP. Don't start doing too much of your own thing. Make sure you're training from the SOP of the of the training manual. Consistency in everything. Be consistent. You want to train everybody the same way with the same information. Also, you want to touch base with leads. And this is also true in monorails and any other area that you might have trained in, is to touch base with leads, touch base with the supervisors, and figure out exactly where they need help. You could be training throughout the day and say you're in a bathroom over by Small World and you guys are just doing your thing. Well, if they're really short-handed, or there's a problem in another restroom, you should be flexible enough to go help out or contact a lead and say, hey, is there any specific place that we need help in? Oh yeah, it's really busy over in Adventureland. Can you guys uh, head over there and help out there? So it's really important to be able to coordinate with other leads, other supervisors, sort of know what's going on in the area and be able to coordinate. So what you're actually getting some things accomplished while training and not just training for the sake of training and ignoring everybody else or the, the rest of the area. So that's a little bit of a look into some of the training guides from other areas. A bunch of stuff that was in there from custodial and some other uh, guides that were brought up when you were doing basically trainer's training. Learning how to be a trainer, learning how to be a better trainer, things you should be teaching new people and reminders and things like that. So thanks for joining us. Sorry this one was just a couple hours later than usual. Hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for joining us. Remember to like, subscribe, share, tell your friends if you feel up to it. Thanks everybody. And remember, have a good time all the time.